In overseas basketball, there is no job application. There is no offering, so to speak, on the internet. So how do you actually find teams to get you a professional job? Well, today I'm gonna to show you five different ways in which you can help to bridge that gap and get your overseas basketball career started. So let's get right into it. Now, one way to contact overseas basketball teams is to do it yourself. You can do it through social media. You can do it through tracking them down through their email address. There's many different ways that you can contact teams on your own, but the best lead to begin with is gonna be Eurobasket. Now, if you don't know what this website is, it's the database for all of overseas basketball. So it has Asia, it has Latin America, it has Europe, it has North America, it has all all the different continents and not only this but it also has the teams and the social media accounts so this is a great way for you to actually do it on your own now i will warn you and say this if you are attempting to get into a higher league then this will not work but if you are trying to get into a lower level league then this can be effective because in lower level leagues, the vast majority of time, the social media will be handled by the actual general manager himself. So this is gonna give you direct access to the decision maker in the organization. Now, I made another video on how to actually use Eurobasket. It's much too long or detailed to actually go into it in this video. So go ahead and check it out. But one way to do it is to contact them yourself. And the best way I would say to do that is through Eurobasket. Now, another way to get in contact and to get into overseas basketball is literally uprooting your life, going in person for a tryout. Now, this is obviously the most costly, the most expensive. It's probably honestly a case of biggest reward, a biggest payoff in the end. Once you are in front of these teams, you're at a massive, massive advantage over other players because now there's no more guesswork. The coach is thinking, does this guy's skills translate to this level? We saw his highlights, but what's the level over there? Is it comparable to here? Will he fit into our team environment? Is he a good guy? How, is he professional? These are all things that kind of are washed away once you are overseas and you are literally in front of a team. Now, I will say there are multiple, multiple ways that you can do this. And I would never ever, disclaimer alert, I would never ever recommend that you just uproot your life and you go overseas without a plan or you don't have some sort of financial back in in your life to actually do it. So there's many ways that you can kind of reduce the cost of you doing this huge undertaking. Now, a few ways that you can do it is that you can find a job overseas in a specific country and that can be the way that you get over there or even get a work visa over there and then you'll be set for maybe a year or however long that visa is. I've seen people do that before. Another way is that you can travel. Usually a lot of these countries, depending on where you are, but a lot of these countries, certain day threshold of how long you're able to stay overseas. Some countries are 60 days, some countries are 90 days. So some of that, that's three months, you can fit some seasons into that travel stay. That's a way that you can do it as well. If you have family members who live overseas and you see that there is a professional league in that region, then that's a way that you can cut down on boarding and costs, basically be more comfortable in an easier, make an easier transition for you to be overseas. Another way is studying abroad. A lot of clubs actually offer master's programs, specifically in Europe, where you can study, you can play on their university team, and then you can move up to the professional team afterwards. I've seen that many times. One thing that may be popping into your mind is, well, how do you actually even find these teams to begin with when I'm overseas? Well, if you are in a smaller city, it's going to be much easier than you think. A lot of these smaller cities, smaller villages, towns, there's probably going to be one gym that you can just attend. So for instance, I remember when I was in El Salvador, there was an American who wanted to play for our team desperately. And he literally just walked into the gym and he introduced himself to our coach and he said, hey, I'd love to practice with you guys. I'm from, I think it was from North Carolina. Can I have a tryout with you guys? Can I work out with you guys? And our coach said, yes. And I asked them honestly, would you actually bring him on if he was a good player? And he said, yes, I would, of course. He's already paid for his flight. That's a cost that can be uh, cut out of the equation. If he's good enough, why not? He's right in front of us. That's just one example. And I've seen this all the time. So point being, if you're gonna travel overseas, locate a team, make sure you have a financial back and you have some sort of plan in place. Don't just go on a whim and also optimize your chances 
by looking at the city and the location so that you can actually get a real tryout in person. Now, another way that you can get an overseas basketball tryout is by becoming an actual asset or worker for the team. Now, this is something that nobody is talking about, but I've seen many people do this and I've actually done it myself on multiple occasions. So I know this works and it makes complete sense. For me, I wanted to play in the NBLC, which was the Canadian Professional League. And I was messaging teams, 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 and no one was giving me a chance for the same reasons as often is the case. They don't know you, they don't know if your skills would translate, et cetera, et cetera. How I was able to get around it was that I actually became a writer for the NBLC. And that way I got to get the phone numbers of all the coaches. I got to get their emails. I was interviewing all the coaches. And then sure enough, once I had built enough rapport with these coaches, they knew who I was. They knew that I was a good guy. Then I unloaded it and I gave them the question that I've been dying to ask them. Can I get a tryout for your team? Then sure enough, there was actually two different teams who allowed me to come for a tryout. One team actually offered me a contract and the other team allowed me to come for a tryout. I saw another player do the similar thing. He was working as a manager. His end goal was always to play for the team. And the same thing happened. They got to know him more and more. They got to get rid of that barrier. Then eventually they actually let him suit up. He went from manager to student up to some of the games at the end of the season. The point is, is that you're actually in the culture, you're in the organization and you are contributing something to them. They are gonna be more inclined to help you. That doesn't mean that they will automatically, but you are gonna have a much better chance of getting onto a team if they know you, if that barrier has been crossed, if they're familiar with you versus you're just the guy who's cold calling them, writing them an email and hey, I don't know you, now there are a few things in overseas basketballs that I would put on kind of like the Mount Rushmore of what's most important to succeed in the game. One of those would be networking. You have to network your tail off. Now, if you used to play in college basketball or high school basketball with someone who played overseas, write them a message, try and get on good terms with them former opponents, former coaches, current coaches, you have to really think about how you can tap into your network when it comes to basketball. And sometimes it's a bit more subtle. Sometimes what you have to do is you just get good with a person and you build a rapport with them over time. Maybe you follow them on social media and you just write them a message every once in a while and maybe they'll have a little back and forth with you. Okay, cool, let it sit for a bit. And then you go back and you write again a few weeks later or maybe a month later about something. For me personally, I can't tell you how many times I've messaged a coach or asked a coach or a pro club for a job and then nothing really came from it. But we still, I didn't, I didn't cuss them out. I didn't say forget you then. I didn't say anything like that. I just let it sit and I just kept a good relationship with them over time. And then sure enough, now some of these teams, some of these coaches, they write me back sometimes on my stuff. A coach recently who it didn't work out when I was trying to get to Belize and Bolivia, now recently they just messaged me and they want me to go there to Belize and Bolivia for two tournaments in this summer. So, you know, you have to be patient. You have to think the long term of what you're doing. Your network really is your net worth in overseas basketball. So whatever you can do, you have to be integrated into the culture and you have to actually be involved and keep a good name and a good active reputation while you are trying to play. The most traditional way to find an overseas basketball team and to get an overseas basketball tryout is through the middle person, whether that's an agent, an academy, a connector, a mutual connection, anything like that. Now in today's game where social media invisibility is more prevalent than ever, I really think that this is somewhat of a dated philosophy, somewhat of a dated culture. You, the player, can take so much of the control into your own hands by following and practicing some of these things that I just told you. But if you still want to get an agent, then obviously an agent is a huge advantage. The problem obviously is a lot of players struggle to get an agent, let alone struggle to get an agent who actually has connections, who can help them in the way that they want. With academies or an agent, the big thing is that they have connections in theory 
to a lot of teams and they act as that barrier. Now there's no more, there's no more unfamiliarity between you and the team. It's not as if you're cold calling because an agent or an academy, they'll have that connection with that team and they'll have that trust. And that is stuff that is really invaluable because that is the type of stuff which is gonna push a team to actually sign a player through the agent, through the academy, it's gonna make your life easier. But obviously, getting an agent is an entirely different video because there's many different aspects, many different things that you have to consider when you get an agent. And quite honestly, an agent isn't for everyone. It took me years before I can even get an agent to sign me. And I was playing professionally for five, six years. And then finally, a big agency or a pretty decently leveled agency in the Middle East signed me, which I'm very happy for. This is a traditional way to do it, but these other ways are a way that you can take manners into your own hands. Now, the main take home message, it is a different game these days. Players can get creative, they have more visibility. There are ways that you can actually put yourself on these days that doesn't require a middleman. Now, obviously this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many th other things that go into becoming an overseas basketball player and increasing your chances of playing overseas. So if you are interested in learning more, then please consider subscribing. Give a like if you can, if you got any value out of the video because that'll help grow this channel and I wanna reach as many players as possible in the future. Good luck in your basketball careers. Take care until next time and God bless, okay? Peace out guys.